introduction to the Gospel of Matthew. Actually, it should be the Gospel according to Matthew. I'm sure you know there is only one Gospel. There is only one Gospel. There are four narratives. Four people penning the record for us, but only one Gospel. So what is the gospel? It is the good news about what God has done through Jesus Christ to save us. Simply, it is the good news. Now, actually, before I, I, I came, a few days back, I was listening to my recording some 12 years ago. And, and those days, uh, the phone must be quite lousy. Uh. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of interference, a lot of break. But the, the lesson can be heard, but just the recording is like blowing in the wind and, and so on, scratchy. Uh, and I believe I have got more content than I had 12 years ago. Should have, right? otherwise I will study for one night. Yeah. <laughs> but I have got some people say, Hey Elder, you already, we already studied Matthew with you, so we don't need to come. I said, please come. Because surely there are new revelation. I mean, new revelation for me. I like to add and share with you. So the good news about what God has done through Jesus Christ to save us. The essence is about Christ's life, His ministry, His death, and His resurrection. That, that is the key thing about the good news. Nothing else. Paul said so simply, I preach nothing but Christ and Him crucified. So Christ, His whole life, His ministry, uh, His teaching, His death, His crucifixion, I mean His crucifixion, His death, and then His resurrection fills us with hope, peace, and joy. Because this is the essence of the blessed hope. If you live without a hope, not knowing when you shut your eyes where you will be for all eternity, that is not hope. But you and I, we have a hope. When we are done with this place, when God calls us home, we are going into His presence. So we have the hope and by then there shall be peace. Because right now there is no peace. And Jesus said, enter into the joy of the Lord. In His presence there shall be. So something for us to look forward to, this thing called El Peace. You heard of the word El Peace? E-L-P-I-S. This is the blessed hope, E-L-P-I-S. And the Greek, this is a Greek word, the meaning of which is, it will surely happen. It is not like, I hope it will not rain. But it also means it may rain. It may not rain. But the blessed hope of Him coming, He shall surely come. I'm just waiting for Him to come. That is the blessed hope. Four narratives, one gospel. I mentioned this two years ago when, when I taught this at the main pulpit. And that was just after President Trump and the North Korean leader came to Singapore, right? And they had their, you know, Gala in Sentosa here, Orchard Road, and so the whole of Singapore stood still. But BC, we were so afraid, we went to Johor to take refuge. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were there for church camp. And you'll find the reporters are all over, I mean, combing the whole of Singapore, from hotel to, from airport to hotel to, to the venues, and and even the dining places, they, they covered every event, they covered every speech, every press conference. Hey, why not just have one reporter, CNN, example, 
cover report, then the rest we just watch and listen. But every reporter represents a country, represents somebody's interest. And the slant is going to be different. So you cannot say it is going to be impartial. It's always partial. The Americans will report it for the Americans here. The North Korean will report it for the North Koreans here. Singapore will report it as, you know, this is a tourist haven. Please come, invest in Singapore. This is a safe place to be. You follow me? So we all report it with a different interest, motive, for a different outcome. So, likewise, this gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ has four narratives. And shortly I will explain, which I've done many times before, but for the sake of recording and, and others who will be learning from this audio, um, what each the purpose of each and every gospel writer, addressed to whom, for whom, and we will study that. So the four narratives, it is like good news, right? News bulletin. So you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, they tell us about the life of Jesus. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they are known as a synoptic, synoptic gospel. That means synoptic, that means synonymous, similar. They, they have the same perspective. They tell about the birth, the life, the ministry, the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, His death, resurrection. They cover that. Whereas when you come to John, John covered mostly uh, about his uh, ministry in Judea. And also a great emphasis on the theolo theological part of Jesus Christ. I mean, you start the Gospel according to John with in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word is God. Wow. That is quite theological, you understand? So, that from scholars' point of view a bit different from a different perspective which I'll share with you uh, from the first three. So the first three are known as synoptic they are quite similar, but different. Not complete biographies because when you read the narratives, you do not know Jesus handsome or not. Tall, how how you know his weight, high, low, you know. It is it's not about the biographies. Because if it were, then you know. The people will create a statue or idol and then, wow, oh, this is Jesus. As it is already, they come out with it. And we were in Bethlehem and we were in one of the caves. And you'll find that there are people who will bow down and touch the door and, you know, with, with uh, piety, you know, you know piousness and, and, and go and kiss the floor where supposedly Jesus was born in a manger. That is the spot where the baby was. Men tend to idolize. So, in this narrative, you don't get all this description. They say very little of his family's background, youth, and nothing of his physical appearance. If you read Isaiah chapter 53, I think verse 2, he, he got no beauty and no nothing that we will behold him because he is quite common ordinary like you and I. That's our Lord Jesus. So you don't hear too much about his family background and then you. Because his sole purpose here is in obedience to the Father to fulfill what God has asked him and told him to do. Concentrated almost totally on the three years of his ministry, his person is teaching his death and resurrection. Each author had a slightly different purpose and audience in mind, but together they gave us a full picture of Jesus. So what are the differences? Okay, before that, why the four narratives? The importance of the person focused, Jesus and his teaching, specific audience targeted. 
I think I explained it now. Let's go straight into the table. Now, we have Matthew, we have Mark, we have Luke, and we have John. And often than not, when someone receives Christ, the counsellor will say, Nah, this is your gift, your Bible. Uh, go and read John. And start with John. Why? Because if God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. John 3.16 So the person starts. And like I started many years ago, I gave up. Don't understand. And, and you try and anchor the person's interest in, in the Word of God and come from Bible study. Not easy. So, we need to break it down and see the four different narratives and then you have a better understanding of uh, the purpose and who is it written for. And Christ was presented dif differently in each of this book. So we have Matthew. Matthew was written for the Jews, targeted at the Jews. And I explain more when we start with Matthew. And Christ was presented as the king of the Jews. And so that's why he quoted a lot of scriptures from the Old Testament, uh, which the Jews would be familiar. So presented as the king of the Jews. So if you ask me, it cannot be for new believers. Because the new believers wouldn't know anything about the Old Testament. You keep referring to Old Testament, yeah? This was uh, so that the whatever was fulfilled as written in the Old Testament. I have no idea of the Old Testament. So it cannot be for me. I'm a new believer. Then when you come to Mark, Mark wrote this to the Romans. Because at that point in time, as you study the time, the, the, the timeline just now, the Romans were ruling. So that would be your biggest audience then. So he wrote to the Romans. And in the first one, uh, it, to Matthew is what Jesus said, but this one is what Jesus did. And here he presented Jesus as the servant of God. As the servant of God. If you study uh, Mark, these are very short chapters and very narrative it's like reading a newspaper. Well, what happened and then next? So, cut to the chase, give you the, the, the event, the incident, the activity. So, then, then, there is not much elaboration, but enough to keep your interest. And presented Jesus as a servant of God. This is what he did. This is what, because the Romans are, don't really care who you are and, and what's your background. What can you do? What can you contribute? And so they are interested in works. So Mark presented to the Romans Jesus as the servant of God. So earlier in Matthew, he was a promised saviour, but now he is a powerful saviour. He can do works. And surely, this book, this book is targeted at new believers because the Romans are ignorant of the grace of Christ and the life of Christ. So it is targeted for new believers. Then you come to Luke. Luke is a Gentile, not a Jew. And he was a doctor by training. So being learned, being detailed, he was the best person to pen every detail and record. And he, you read the, 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 the Gospel, he, he, he take a lot of effort to do research to put everything in place accurately. So, and he directed this to the Greeks. To the Greeks. What Jesus said, and it's the longest, longest narrative of all the four writers. And he presented Jesus as the Son of Man. He is the perfect Savior. The Son of Man. 
I thought God, but you must also see Him. He also is Son of Man. So the Greek, otherwise it's very difficult for the Greek to understand. And so, again, to the Greeks, uh, they are really a stranger to the grace of God. So this is targeted to, targeted at the new believers, the book of Luke. I'm not going to detail. So when we get when we get to the respective books, then I'll elaborate a bit more. Because if I elaborate now, when we come to Luke, when you forgot. Then we have John. John is different. That's why he's, he's not synoptic with the rest. His audience was to the whole world. To the whole world. And who Jesus was is important. I can tell you what he said. I can tell you what he did and so on. But who is he? So here comes, here comes uh, John, who wrote who Jesus was. And he presented Jesus as the Son of God. And so, by this, he has to go a bit theological. Jesus as the Son of God. So not easy, not easy for a new believer to comprehend some of these theological uh, uh, things that were mentioned. So it's definitely targeted at believers. <coughs> believers. So if you come across any new believer or you introduce <coughs> someone to Christ, then you should introduce that person to the gospel according to Mark. That is short. <coughs> it's a short book, shortest of the four, and it is very narrative, very interesting. It's like story. So it's easy to read. And when that is done, that person wants more, needs more detail. Go on to Luke. Then to Matthew. Then to John. Okay? That will be my recommendation. But the key thing to note is, even though they are different in the narrative, but there is unity. The unity, it's about Jesus, about his birth, his life, his ministry, his death, and his resurrection. That is the unity in diversity. So, okay, that in short is the introduction. So let's go on to uh, chapter 1. 